In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this old school black and white effect on your videos right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have some footage on your composition, we can first begin by just dropping on a simple black and white effect. So we'll go to the Effect and Presets tab up here. If you can't see that for any reason though, then just make sure that is turned on up here in the Window tab. And then once you've got that, just search for black and white. That is quite simply just under color correction. And you just drag that onto your footage and you've got an instant black and white look. At the moment though, there's not really a lot of contrast. So we're just gonna drop on levels. So search for levels. And then you can drop levels or levels individual controls on. It's up to you, but I'm just gonna go for levels. I'm going to increase the input black to crush the blacks. And then I'm just going to decrease the number on the input white down to around 204. Old cameras didn't exactly have great dynamic range, so you typically see crushed shadows and overexposed highlights. So you want to try and recreate that look here by adding in this contrast, slightly blow out the highlights and slightly crush your shadows. You don't want to do it too much though, like this, because that just looks horrendous. So just dial it down. You can see it's starting to blow out a bit at the back here and the shadows are crushed and that I feel looks believable. Now from here, we need to go ahead and we need to add a vignette. So we'll go layer, new, solid. Make sure the color is black. We'll press OK, press OK. And then once you've got that solid created, we'll go up into the ellipse tool up here. It may look like a rectangle, so just drag that down and select the ellipse tool. Then we'll just draw a circle across the middle of the video. We'll go into mask one, select inverted to invert that mask, and then just increase the mask feather all the way up to around 400, 500% and pull the mask opacity down to around 60, 70%, somewhere around there. So if we turn this on and off, you can see we've got this really nice vignette, which is just softly adding a little bit of color onto the edge. Now from here, we need to go ahead and create an adjustment layer. So we'll right click, go new adjustment layer. Then from there, we're going to search for Gaussian blur. That should be in blur and sharpen. We'll drop that onto the adjustment layer. And then inside of Gaussian Blur, you want to pull the blurriness all the way up to around 50%. We'll change the blur dimensions to horizontal, select repeat edge pixels. Then with the adjustment layer selected, you want to press T on the keyboard to load opacity. Or alternatively, you can go into transform to find opacity there. And then just pull the opacity of this layer down to around 50, 40%, somewhere around there until you're getting this nice blurring effect happening. There you go, that looks great. Now from here, we need to go ahead and create a new adjustment layer again. So new adjustment layer. We'll go into effects and presets and search for Venetian blinds. There should be an animation preset and a transition. You want to go for the transition and not the animation preset because the transition preset is an actual animation. It's got keyframes applied to it. So good for the transition one. Of course, by the way, you can see this is getting confusing. I've got footage, black solid, adjustment layer, adjustment layer. Feel free to rename these. And if you did want to rename these, just right click and select rename. So you could always call this blinds. So make sure the Venetian blinds is on the blinds adjustment layer and not on the other adjustment layer. Then you want to go transition completion, go up to around 20 to begin with. We'll pull the direction to 90. We'll decrease the width down to around seven, maybe eight. You still want to see them, but you want it to be quite fine. You can feather it a little bit if you want, but I wouldn't do this much, maybe around two or three. And then of course you can always increase or decrease the transition completion as much to your taste. If you pull it all the way up, then it's just going to be completely dark. If you have it at zero, then the blinds aren't going to be visible at all. So somewhere around 20% works for me in my example. Now that looks great, but the problem is at this point in time, it looks a little bit too clean still. So we need to add some digital noise onto our video. So we'll go onto the footage layer, go effects and presets and search for noise. Then you just want to drop noise onto your footage. Amount of noise, you can pull up to around 10. Of course, the higher you go, the more noisy this is going to get. And that can look really ugly. 
pull this to 50. It's there. It's a bit more subtle. We'll do maybe 40 in this example. And then deselect color noise. This is a black and white video. So you want to deselect the color. And that's adding that nice bit of grain onto our footage. Now creating this old school effect also means that we're going to have to control the aspect ratio. TV 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago wasn't filmed in widescreen. It was filmed in a four by three aspect ratio. That means the video wasn't as wide. It had these black bars on the left and the right if you were to watch it on a widescreen player. So an easy way of creating that is to go layer, new, solid, black video. We'll turn on the proportional grid for a reference. We'll go up to the rectangle tool and we'll just draw a square in the middle of the video then we can go into the mask press inverted we'll turn off the proportional grid and then of course you can always increase the scale if you didn't want that to be as wide and that is an easy way of creating that four by three aspect ratio if you wanted to be really particular and have the exact dimensions then go ahead and create a new composition Make sure that the width of this composition is 1024 and the height is 768. That is a four by three aspect ratio. If you lock that, you can always increase the quality. And then from there, you just have to drop this composition. So comp two, we'll drop comp two into comp four. And if we just zoom in, you can now see we've got this old school effect on our footage and it's in the correct aspect ratio. Of course, you don't have to change the aspect ratio if you're just looking for this effect to add onto your footage in a widescreen or an anamorphic project, then that's completely fine. But if you're looking for a way to make this effect more genuine and more authentic to the era of TV that you're creating here, then changing the aspect ratio is an easy way of doing so. And there you go. That is the old school TV effect inside of Adobe After Effects now complete. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.